Welcome to the Schwartz Advisors Report from Aftermarket News. I'm Maddie Weiner, and today I'm joined by Rick Schwartz, CEO of Schwartz Advisors. Rick, thanks for being with us today. Well, thanks for having me, Maddie. And Rick, I know this is the first episode of the Schwartz Advisors Report, um, and we're so excited to partner with you guys on this series and share Schwartz, Schwartz Advisors expertise with uh, the aftermarket. Yeah, we're excited to partner with Babcocks uh, on this report, and uh, we're looking forward over the next year to uh, put out some information and some of the observations from our team members on different trends that are um, impacting the aftermarket. Yeah, same here. And I know we'll have one video per month and, and one blog post. So those of you watching, definitely be sure to stay tuned for that. Yes, yeah, we're, I think our first uh, blog post will be out on September 26th. So Rick, as an aftermarket focused M&A advisory firm, uh, Schwartz Advisors and you definitely have particularly close relationships with private equity companies. So just to start out, so we're all on the same sort of playing field, uh, what is private equity and how does it factor into the motor vehicle aftermarket? Well, private equity firms are um, firms that have raised a lot of capital and they make investments in companies and their objective is to help those companies grow and um, improve performance and um, be in a position where they, they um, are in a better place when the companies are sold compared to when the private equity firm first bought them. Okay, got it, got it. So Rick, why is private equity particularly interested in the automotive aftermarket? Well, Maddie, the private equity community has been active as an investor in the automotive aftermarket for a number of years now. And at Schwartz Advisors, we see four broad themes that continue to encourage PE investment in the aftermarket. First of all, the aftermarket is huge. I think a lot of us know the statistics, 285 million vehicles on the road, right. average age, 12 and a half years, vehicle miles traveled. So it's a huge market that continues to attract the uh, private equity investors. Um, there's also the stability of the aftermarket, which is a, a good variable for private equity investors in uh, good times in the overall economy and times of uh, slow growth. Mm -hmm. Also, there's over 100 PE companies in the aftermarket, so we're going to continue to see um, more investments in the aftermarket. And there's just a lot of success stories of PEs uh, doing well in the aftermarket that will bring in um, new investors to the aftermarket. Yeah, for sure. I, I didn't realize 100, over 100 PEs in the automotive aftermarket. That's, that's a lot. That's, that's pretty significant. Yeah, and then to be clear, um, it's over 100 PE-owned companies, Maddie. Ah, uh, okay. Um, there are many private equity firms that own multiple companies in the aftermarket. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. So, uh, Rick, can you touch on any particular channels that there's been some um, pretty heavy, uh, you know, private equity activity in, in the automotive aftermarket? I know um, I was just talking to a coworker this morning about, you know, collision it has been pretty active, but any, any others you see that you can point to? Yeah, Collision has certainly been um, very attractive for private equity investors. But, you know, Maddie, um, private equity is invested in every segment of the aftermarket. Um, and we expect to con see continued activity with service providers like Collision, uh, tire dealers, um, mm -hmm. and every other aspect of service, distributors, suppliers, um, SEMA, and even the heavy-duty commercial world. Awesome. Very, very interesting. So Rick, uh, you all have very strong relationships with investment banks, including Piper Sandler. Um, from what I understand, uh, Piper Sandler and Schwartz Advisors hosted an automotive service summit uh, last week. So um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, Maddie, um, we, we work very closely uh, with the team at Piper Sandler. And last week, we put on our second annual uh, conference titled the Automotive Service Summit. We had over 200 attendees at the conference last week. That included current private equity investors in the aftermarket, uh, private equity firms that are looking for new investments, and aftermarket company executives. Very cool. So kind of bringing the two sides together to, to meet, to talk about industry topics, things like that. Yeah, you know, the whole idea is to put together a day-long uh, agenda 
where we look at various topics related to service. Uh, we looked at collision, okay. we looked at car wash, e-commerce, artificial intelligence in the aftermarket, and a number of other topics related to service. Very interesting. So uh, can you kind of go into maybe who was at the conference? Um, you know, what sort of uh, sessions there were? Uh, you mentioned the segments touched on, but uh, maybe go further into, you know, some of the companies that were there and things like that. Well, we had um, a number of companies represented. Uh, Lori Fleece, who's the incoming CEO of Valvoline, gave mm -hmm. a, um, uh, a keynote presentation. Uh, we had a number of leading companies um, in the collision space there. Uh, we had companies um, who are doing some great work in artificial intelligence, um, Repairify, Predi, uh, and, and a few others. Um, so it's, it's pretty exciting to see different um, um, executives from across the industry talk about um, what's happening. And, um, you know, if, if I could, I think one of the uh, really interesting comments that I heard last week um, yeah. came from one of my partners at Schwartz Advisors, Derek Kaufman. Um, Derek pointed out that e-fuels may impact how governments are going to view internal combustion engines. And, you know, in our industry, there's this big discussion of what's going to happen with electric vehicles and where right. EVs take over. And certainly there's more EVs being sold. But um, with the, some of the new technology behind e-fuels, it's going to change how governments view internal combustion engines. It actually may um, guarantee internal combustion engine viability even in those countries that are attempting to ban them. And Derek mm -hmm. uh, Kaufman writes about this in an upcoming Schwartz Advisors report blog that will be published here on AMN on September 26th. Yes, yes. And I know this is the first episode of the Schwartz Advisors report. Many more to come, including blog posts. So uh, very excited to work with you guys on this and uh, you know share your uh, market intelligence with the aftermarket. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, we, we love the aftermarket. All of the partners at our company come from the aftermarket. So, you know, we, we've been doing this for a while and um, it's something that we're very passionate about. Yes. Well, I, I can definitely tell. I've met uh, other, um, you know, team members of yours from Schwartz Advisors and uh, yeah, all, always an interesting conversation and you can feel the passion <laughs> definitely in their voices coming through. So very exciting. Now, Rick, last question for you. I wanted to go back to the um, Automotive Service Summit. Um, can you mm -hmm. maybe describe some major takeaways um, that you had from the conference? Anything that was particularly interesting that you can share with uh, the audience today? Yeah, so um, we had um, another keynote from Rob Wagman. Uh, Rob is the former CEO of LKQ and he's very active as an investor. And Rob talked about um, you know, uh, what it takes to succeed both in just general business, but also as an investor. Um, I mentioned the AI panel, mm -hmm. um, just some real exciting work being done that's going to um, really change how um, collision repair and other service um, um, activities get done with the support of AI. Um, you know, we heard about um, some of the upcoming trends um, that are in the franchise different business models. Um, okay. So it was just a, a just a really good, um, uh, you know, the, the breadth of information from the speakers was really impressive. Awesome. Very interesting. Yeah. Ho hopefully I'll be able to go next year if you guys, if you guys have it. So very cool. Very cool. I hope, I hope yes. so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, Rick, I want to thank you for your time today. Again, very excited to, um, you know, partner with you guys on the Schwartz Advisors Report and, uh, if anyone is interested in working with you guys or, or learning more, um, where can they go? Just uh, you can find us on the web at uh, schwartzadvisors.com. And uh, you can also use social media to find a lot of uh, the, the partners from our company. Sounds great. Thanks so much for your time, Rick. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Maddie.